Ok. Sound are fine. Hello everyone, this is Srikanth Angal and in this video we will be taking up a solid problem, a projection of solids problem. So we have here a hexagonal pyramid of base which is 30 mm and axis 60 mm. It's lying on a slant edge on the ground with the axis parallel to VP. So we have to draw its projections when the face containing the resting edge are equally inclined to HP. Let's first take a moment to understand what exactly is hexagonal pyramid. Fine. So what you see here is the hexagonal pyramid. So you can see this is how the hexagonal pyramid looks like. So I'll just make it shaded. Fine. So you can see the base of this pyramid is hexagonal in shape and all these vertex points they are all meeting at a top point. So this top point is called as the apex. So all these points are meeting at the apex. So the base edges length has been given to us and the axis height has also been given to us. So when you see in the front view, you will see the height of this axis. And when you see the top view, you can see this is how it appears in the top view. So coming back to a problem, we have been told that it is resting on a slant edge on the ground. So when you want to make it rest on a slant edge on the ground, what you have to make do is you have to draw your top view like this. It is only when you draw the top view like this that you will be able to incline it properly like this. Fine. So this solid with what you see here, this is getting inclined with the HP such that its slant edge, such that its slant edge, you can see this is the slant edge. So that slant edge, the slant edge should be exactly in the HP. Fine. So HP and VP also, I'll just make it visible so that you can see. So this is how it will be, it is supposed to rest. So this is how it is supposed to rest and uh, the edges of the base, these two edges, this base, this edge and this edge, which are starting from the edge which is in HP, they should be equally inclined to HP. So when you see from one of the views, these two edges, they should have equal, equal inclinations with the HP. So that is a condition given to us. So to start drawing, first we'll have to start with the top view. So you'll have to start with the top view like this. Fine. So in AutoCAD, to draw the hexagon, we can just use the polygon command. So just type POL, enter. It will ask you how many sides you want. So in a hexagon, we know we have six sides. So just type six enter. And now it is asking for a center. We don't want to use center method because uh, we want the edge length. Edge length has been given to us. So we'll use the edge method. So you can choose edge from the command line down here or you can just right click and use edge. Once you have chosen that, then you have to just click at one point and you can see when uh, I'm drawing, I'm actually drawing only one of the edges and the remaining edges are automatically formed. They are made by the AutoCAD. So now, uh, the position in which I want to draw it is this position because this corner, one of the corners has to appear on the left side uh, because we want it to rest on one of its slant edges. So the length of the hexagon has been given to us as 30. So I'll just keep it in horizontal direction and feed 30 from keyboard, press enter. So this will draw a hexagonal hexagon in top view. Now I'll just move it down a little and draw the other things like I need an X, X, Y line, X, Y line, that is a reference line and uh, I need to name it properly. I'll just take DT command for naming it. I'll press here. Then height, I'll just feed as 4 and angle 0. So I'll just name this as A, this one B, C, D. You can go on clicking and typing whatever name you want to give it. Once I've named it, I'll just press escape. And then I'll just draw projections from all these points to the top. All these points to the top. Next, I will need an axis line from the center. So I'll just join two of the vertices and with the intersection point, I'll just draw a line up to here and then I will continue drawing that line upwards. Now height of this pyramid has been given to be 60. So I'll just draw 60. So you can see this length I'm drawing separately compared to this. Now we got the vertex point. 
So that vertex point, we can just join them, join that vertex point with all these points at the base. And also join this, fine. So now this is what forms the front wheel. So I'll just make these lines solid. All the visible edges, I want to make them solid. So I'll just make them solid. So in a pyramid, you must note that these slant edges will also be visible. So we'll have to join all these as well. So these will be visible from the top view. So you can see here when you draw this, when you first draw it in the top view, it'll look like this. All these edges will be visible. And with the same, you know, when you project this same pyramid, when you project this same pyramid, it will appear somewhat like this in the front view. Fine. So this is how you are supposed to project it. So you can see when 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 I'm when I'm moving this, any of the points, you can see the, this point or this point or this point or this point or any any other point you can you can think of. All these points, they are moving in a straight line. Fine. Just observe this carefully. So when you have, when these points are moving, they're, they're, these points they are moving here along a straight line when I am projecting it. And that's the reason this point will just uh, lie on the projector, projector. So the front view as well as top view of any given point during the projection, it will always lie on a single vertical projector. And this information we will be using to draw the projections. Then you can continue naming the front view. Top views, all the points have been named without a dash with small letters and front view when you see it has been, it will be named using small letters of course but with a dash to identify them separately from the top view. So this point here D dash and the F dash point is going exactly behind this so both these points I will name it and the point here this is C and E so C dash and E dash. And finally, the point here, the last one, it is D to D dash. So you can also name the top point as something like O. And this bottom point here, you can call it as O1 or something like this. O. So this is O. Oh, okay, both these points again, we have to keep a dash for them. O dash. O dash. So in order to make them unique, what you can do is, you can just provide a number 1 here. So make sure you just reduce its size slightly. Scale command you can use for reducing its size and just keep it here. So O dash O1 dash, this point represents the axis. So you can just make this line as axis. Okay. So all these layers and other stuff I have kept in the table. You can find the uh, link to the template uh, in the description. You can just download that and start using it. If you want to make the template for your own sake, there is a separate video I had made some days back. You can check that video out. Fine. So now our diagram, the first view of the diagram is ready. So now what we have to do is we have to incline it. We have to incline it according to the given conditions. So what condition it has given is he is telling that one of the edges is resting on the ground. So in order to make that happen, what you have to, what, what you have to do is, you have to take this, I'll just make a copy of this, fine. and then I'll just incline it such that this edge over here, it gets coincided with the ground. So I'll just rotate it. So when you're rotating this, like this, you can see, I'm, I, I will not be able to get exactly this angle. So in rotation command, after selecting the whole object and choosing the point correctly, you have to go for something called reference. So when you click on reference, you will be allowed to click two points. So the first point is here, the second point I will choose here. And now you can see that, uh, that, that that part is rotating according to my reference. Fine. So just reference has been chosen and then I can just click anywhere on the XY line and this edge of the pyramid will coincide exactly with the XY line. I can just move it aside and you can see the text also has rotated so I can just match properties I can give the command match properties you may enter and click on all these points so the points will become straight fine of course you can move them later to just make them convenient fine okay so this is our point so now we can just project these points downwards and match them with this top view to get other points. So I can just match this one and this is a point 
intersection i got it this point is a and a point is here so i just need this yeah this point then point d dash should meet with this point coming to c and e c and e you can see c point is here so it should coincide here e point is here so it should coincide here then coming to b and f b and f and b and f you can see they are actually coinciding with these two points so i can just extend these lines to get to points so these are the points that we want fine so one two three four five six and one apex point so these are the points we need so let's take a look at this in the three dimensions so what we have done right now is uh, we have drawn uh, yeah the front view we have drawn fine so we have drawn the front view in this inclined position such that this edge over here it is coinciding with hp fine so now what we have to do is we have to draw its top view so you can see the top view when you see some of the edges will be hidden and some of the edges will be visible fine so we have to you have to be careful when you are doing this fine so hidden edges you can see this edge and this edge that edge is exactly behind fine so when you rotate and see this this is exactly behind so those hidden edges they will not be visible when you when you see them in the top view so you have to identify which edges are visible these three edges are visible and uh, yes so when you see this from the top the, of the front view when you see it from the top view these edges they are actually you know coming before the other edges so this is how you have to identify it so let me see let us see how to do that so when you see from here so this edge here will be visible or you could just go ahead and uh, follow a procedure a very simple procedure so first of all always you have to go for the outermost boundary so i'll just take polyline command and use the outermost boundary so i'll just have to draw the outermost boundary i should not draw any of the inner edges be careful not to draw any of the inner edges just draw outermost boundary fine so let me show you how the outermost boundary looks like so this is the outermost boundary so you can see this is the outermost convex body and with no other edges are possible which can go outside of this boundary fine so that's what i'm calling it as the outermost boundary once the outermost boundary is drawn because outermost boundary cannot hide behind any of the faces so it's obviously visible hence we are drawing it first now next step is to identify which of the other edges will be visible so to do that we have to top we have to watch it from the top this side so a is the point we are getting and that point here it is here so from this particular point from this particular point whatever edges are there they will be visible definitely they will be visible fine so these edges these three edges they will be definitely visible because they are coming first so we'll just make this as solid lines and after this there will be some hidden edges so hidden edges whatever other edges are there apart from these edges that i have drawn they will all be hidden so i'll just draw a line from this point to this point and this part of the line i'll just break this line here and extend it fine so this part of this hidden edge actually the hidden edge will be going from this point all the way to this point but since uh, we have a solid line here this hidden line will not be visible so only these parts will have to do it so now i'll just match the properties i'll take the hidden edge properties and apply them here here and here fine so these are the hidden edges the so naming you can you can do the same way i'll just pause it and do so you can name your diagram like this fine the same way by matching these two points this top view and this front view you can match them and you can name the points and uh, yes that's how you are able to solve the problem so in this particular position you, uh, you can see that this is the point o fine so what i was telling is in this position uh, the two edges that uh, are there they are equally inclined so you can see here this edge and the edge behind this these are the two edges or you can say this this edge and this edge these two this two, these two edges they are equally inclined to hp and it is exactly resting as it has been explained in the problem and that solves our problem fine so thank you for watching this video and if you like this video of course give us a thumbs up and stay subscribed to the channel for any further updates we'll be making a lot more of these videos on autocad and of course this will be helpful to you if your university is using autocad for subjects like engineering graphics Thank you once again. Jai Hind.